what, what, what's the next vote we're going to get? Like they're really optimistic and they're kind of playful. And they know that they could, you know, things could go down and they, maybe they can't get back. But it's kind of things like that, like just really going with the flow. Mm-hmm. Not all of these kind of appendages to sell, save somebody immediately, like a sell, you know, GPS, EPIRB or whatever, like, you know, close calling, close guard. But anyway, um, it is really fun to ride multiple different things. I really enjoy it. As I've gotten older, I'm thinking like I want to, I really, I really think like I really like swimming and I really like sailing. And I always say to myself every summer, it's like I'm not going to do anything else than to swim and sail. But it's really hard to do that because I <laughs> love chasing waves near the beach. It's really fun. <laughs> and you've been and really seeing people like you. <laughs> well, it's that's, great. that's I... funny because you're also like quite the loner. So you run yeah. into and meet people, but you're also like, okay, bye. And then you know, if there's any lineup, you're as far away. Uh, from the crowd as you could possibly be, you know, yeah. like, uh, Hey, a couple of reasons. Cause I'm, I re- I'm really nearsighted <laughs> and I'm pretty shy most of the time. Like, I don't really, I don't understand like another thing with language, like with the narwhal language, I don't know what they're saying, but I, <laughs> sounds good, but I don't really, under, I don't really know how to communicate with people so well most of the time. It's like, so, and I don't mind being by myself. Mm-hmm. Just that's a friend of mine in New Zealand once said, said to me, Jeremy, you're a loner. And I was like, oh, shoot, I'm a loner. I'm, that means like I'm a loser. I'm no. like, oh, wow. And I was like, then I was like kind of embraced it. I was like, no, I am a loner. I'm totally a loner, man. I'm ready. I just like want to want to sail by myself. I love people, but I'd rather sail by myself. And I'm, anyway, so. Well, I think it's a good balance. I mean, I do yeah, think you're, good you're very, I, I, I don't find you in any way socially awkward. Like, I feel like you're, you're not that, that like, <laughs> hermit you know who, who doesn't even know how to speak you know hasn't practiced <laughs> speaking in a minute but um this nice balance of obsession with the water and that being your priority and that being your so-called clock you know everything is kind yeah. of filtered through that and everything else takes a second you know but um what are you writing these days what's your your craft you've been you're so, foiling so, a lot for a minute yes. there yeah I really i enjoy foiling I when I watch people do it who are really good, Oof. I'm so impressed. But I'm also yeah. like, oh my god, that looks so dangerous. <laughs> like there's a place in Long Island, like in the end of in Montauk, right, where I like to surf. Where it's usually people who aren't who are just surfing for maybe the, for the first or second time. Oh boy! And they're not within the crowds. Like they're just in their own. They're really like trying to experience it. They're like at a break. What isn't the prime break? Mm-hmm. It's it's a breakdown a little bit down to the West, right? Mm-hmm. No need to mention, yeah. <laughs> yeah, no need to mention. You know what I mean? Just everyone knows that, that and it's great because everybody's kind of like anonymous and in their own world. And then you'll see like, you know, you'll see somebody who's learning how to surf and they're really ecstatic. And then they'll see somebody who's le- really good at foiling and you're just like, wow, that looks amazing. That looks so dangerous. And then I, I like to try to foil. I like to foil, but I'm not as good as the people they really need some people who go to you know Montauk who are really good mm-hmm. and who are there this summer. And I'm like, wow, that looks so dangerous. But it's super fun. Yeah. And it's I mean it's really fun. So I've been foiling, but I've also been wing foiling a lot, which makes me be more anonymous because wing foiling is like when you hold this, you know, this what you see Kai Lenny do, do and um what's her name? Is it um Forgot this. I don't really think I know page, what is page arms. What is w- wing foiling? I don't think I know this. Okay, so wing foiling is like you're on a small hydrofoil board, mm-hmm. right? Like a small board, like five foot. Mm-hmm. It can float you when you're when you're not for being propelled by the wind. Your hands are holding onto a small kite that you hold up above your head. It's not a windsurfer and it's not kite surfing. Oh it's God. just sort of like a hand kite. So there's two handles. <laughs> oh God, that is... Th- like no things boom. like kite it's- surfing or like things like that where you have two things going on, I can't. Yeah, it's and it's like, <laughs> it's really neat because you don't need much wind to do it and it's mm. all silent when you're up, right? Amazing. And of course, we're saturated with images of incredible athletes doing acrobatics, basically, right. gymnastics on these things. I can't do any of that stuff. <laughs> I, and I don't, I don't think my health insurance would even, you know, they would just say the ambulance to take me to the dump if I got hurt. You know, they'd be like, we can't fix you because you can get really hurt, it looks like. I, I imagine that is probably the closest feeling sensation to flying without actually having wings. Would, like hydrofoiling, probably. I've tried and it, I've yeah. never, uh, that experience was probably more exciting than the first time I ever got up on a surfboard. It was like, 
oh my God. And also the mm -hmm. whole mechanics of, of how it engages and, you know, the, the little wing underwater and then you yeah. kind of start to elevate. That feeling is absolutely nuts. And that no friction kind of hovering over the water thing. It's just like, wow, I, I want to do it more. I just, don't. yeah, we should, you should come this summer. I have extra stuff. So oh, great. Yeah. It's just that, <laughs> yeah, it's so fun. You're right. It's like that frictionless feeling mm -hmm. hovering and it's silent, relatively silent, right? It's super fun. And it's really fun when nobody's around because there's less likely to be <laughs> injury. I mean, knock on wood, there hasn't been really any injuries. One of my friends got cut really bad this summer. Yikes. Because the rear blade was so oh, was so sharp. God. Like, you know, it's like, wow. Yeah. I just but think of he, decapitations with that whole. It's yeah. It's a big it seems, blade. It's a big blade. And especially yeah. when they make them sharp, sometimes they're blunted, which is better, I think. It's not as fast, but we're not <laughs> getting paid to do this. Right. This is fun. But, <laughs> You're not yeah. at Jaws. <laughs> Uh, yeah. yeah. So it's fun. Um, it's it's really beautiful. Um, I don't know. Another beautiful thing, wing foiling, because you're off the water and you're being pulled around by the wind. It's not electric. Mm -hmm. You know, it's every a lot of people are doing it. I know a couple of people who do it where I live, but I don't do it with them. They're usually sailing in another type of apparatus. But mm -hmm. anyway, so that's um that's kind of what I'm thinking. That's what I'm doing now because you can you don't need waves and you can still be foiling, right? Right, Because we're doing it in the bay. We're not, I'm not doing it in the ocean because I don't feel like I'm good enough because there's a lot to handle when you get in and out of the water, holding onto the right. wing and mm -hmm. holding onto the board. But I highly recommend people to try it if they're interested. It's, it's really so fun. Just wear a helmet and wear, wear an impact vest. Oh my vest. God. The, the learning curve is really, you know, it's just really hard. Uh, especially... Also, it's time. And it's yeah. like, how much time can we do exactly. with all these different things, right? Like exactly. you want to body surf, like there's incredible body surfers that we know, at, you know, rock away those guys are amazing people right. are amazing and they're having so much fun and incredible surfers so i wonder what's going to happen next like for, for technology and surfing and i know, stuff. I, you know i can't knows? even i'm not that person to think i'm just like <laughs> trying to still hone in on things that are already here so it's hard yeah, for me yeah. to see uh, i appreciate it but and then i also reluctantly get swept up into the next thing so like when the foil thing came i was like oh god who needs that and then i tried it and i was like the first online to to kind of like sing its praises it's really just amazing and i just can't wait to do it more but i'm just like i, I don't have enough time for another obsession like exactly. surfing yeah, alone is too much <laughs> and you tried it with the most amazing person with zane right in yes. bali yeah right i remember those stories uh, that... actually no not in bali it was somewhere in indonesia it was indonesia, on some okay. island in the east and um yeah zane Sch schweitzer yes an amazing foiler from hawaii and like really just, you know, up there with Kai as far as yeah. these different crafts that uh, he's, he's a stand-up paddleboarder. I think his grandfather um, invented windsurfing. That's correct. Kind yeah. Of the word on, That's the, it. Yeah. on the street. And he's so well, he's so naturally gifted yeah. and incredible athlete. I don't know yeah. him, but I would really like to meet him. I like people like that. Yeah. And all that, know. like, you know, Hawaiian aloha, like he just has that spirit is really just a wonderful person and a, and a wonderful teacher. I know he teaches a lot of people foiling mm -hmm. and different water things. And he's just a great teacher. He's so stoked. <laughs> he's just so, so stoked. stoked. <laughs> but to, um, tell me about your films. Like what? I mean, that's now this, I don't know if this is going to, I know, I know everything's being recorded, which is totally fine, but okay. So this is a problem. <laughs> So I like to make films, but I don't really show them to anybody. <laughs> like they just sit on a computer that's not the one I'm talking on, but it's sitting over there and it's even, it's way older than the one we're I'm talking on. Uh -huh. So I have a lot of work to do. <laughs> I'm a really good procrastinator. I have lots of files, like paper files of what films. So, so I like <laughs> making experimental films. I don't really show them to anybody. My parents ask me about them. And I'm like, my dad's like, so you're making movies? And he's like, I want to see them. I'm like, uh. Oh my God, I'm in the and same then, boat. Okay, so the, same boat. the crux of the, huh? Same boat. No, but yeah. you really do things. No, but I, I, mean, I have a lot that is just like literally, like I did a, all this photography. It's literally sitting in shelves. Like I just have not. Not. Just, I just want to keep going, you know, and like to put it out there is just its own kind of effort. And so sometimes I just want to like right. keep creating. So I, I get it. But also at the same time, I feel like, okay, if you don't share it with anyone, then what happens? I don't, I don't think, I don't think there's here or there. Like, I don't think there's value in showing it or not showing it, you know, but I, I just mm -hmm. like wonder, but. 
I, I, so I wrote it. I, I hear what you're saying. I like what you said. And I wrote a note to myself, like I'm on the, on the desk with amongst like all these other papers. I'm like, work on your video and film every day. Cause I really want to, right. but for some reason I'm not doing it. And it's like, cause you're in the water. <laughs> yeah. But it's like, that's lame. I got to like, stop doing that. It's like, you know, uh, and I'm always thinking like, maybe if there's some crazy event that happened, I'd be finished with making some of these things. I've been so like, is that crazy things. event and COVID? It, that, look, <laughs> look, we just had COVID and nothing, there's nothing. I didn't send anything to anywhere. It's all sitting there still. So that's like pathetic. But why I bring this up because my, the, my, the person who wrote the piece in the New Yorker, mm -hmm. really good writer. I really like him. He's really funny. And he's I like other work he's done and his, Anyway, I like the things he's done. Adam Green, he's cool. I'm very grateful to it. And I was like, oh, shoot, they're going to do this. And then what am I going to say? What I do? I could be like, what I said to you, I'm a delinquent or I want to be delinquent. I think you said derelict. Oh, derelict? No, yeah. I meant to say delinquent, like a, like a, like as if I'm a kid. I'm not I a kid, it. I'm old. By the way, I'm to like, our listeners, I asked Jeremy for his bio and he sends me derelict. Which now we find out was supposed to be delinquent. Well, he didn't even uh, get that correct. It's uh, hilarious. Okay, so wh whoever is really good, you know, in English class, try to help somebody like me who misses, <laughs> like, you know, forgets to add words into sentences for my whole life. So a lot of people have to figure out what I'm doing. And it's not just text messaging. So most of the time I'll like forget lots of words in a sentence and I'll look back and I'll be like, oh, that's really weird. What does it even say? It's like, no one's going to know. But yeah, so I probably wrote derelict instead of delinquent. So pardon me. But going back to just um, um, films. So it was great to have the New Yorker piece. But you know what the New Yorker piece does? Like when you get, like one time I was in the New Yorker as an anonymous, anom anom uh, sorry. I was in the New Yorker as uh -huh. a anonymous paddler, right? Uh huh. So I was in a, outrigger canoe in the city and Hokulea was in the city and this guy so after for the new yorker this guy named nick mm -hmm. he's a really good writer does a lot of pieces he did talk of the town piece and he did a piece on um the Hokulea and he came and paddled with us and i was the one man in a woman in a boat with all women of five women paddlers in the sick oc6 right we we're paddling around and there's another boat so they called me and they asked me like oh were you and the, the guy in the boat, the New Yorker did? And I was like, yeah, it was. I was like, oh, that's cool. Anyway, I'm bringing this up because of fact checking, right? So the New Yorker calls me and this very nice person, that's a nice for me, and this editor is asking me, a fact checker is asking me questions. And then she asked me this question. So you like to make experimental films? I'm like, oh no, <laughs> oh no, what am I going to say? I'm like, this is my chance. I should really start working. or I could be like, no, I don't. And of course, I said, um, yeah. <laughs> and I'm like thinking, oh, no. <laughs> and then they write that. And I'm like, oh, man. <laughs> Listen, all I can say is I've had a lot of, I'm very grateful for this interview. <laughs> and I've had a lot of opportunities in my life. And a lot of them I haven't fulfilled for my own self. Like I've had really good open doors and I've kind of shut them. So I, I don't I'm know not, if that's I'm, the case. I think you're, you're, it it comes as you need it. It goes as you, you know, you need it. Like it's not everything. I think the way you live your life is, is a, a work of art. It really is. And um, you. whether you have yeah. something to show for it or not, it's like, you know, whatever it, it's neither here nor there, you know? And I mm -hmm. think um, it's really enviable how there's this like real purity, um, you know, your approach to the ocean is, and it's, um, really amazing. And, and whenever I do get to see your clips, which you sometimes just send me, um, there's so much fun. They just have, oh, thanks. they're just, they're really fun. And also, um, I think you're really devaluing your work by calling yourself a, a delinquent, because I do feel like you, you're so dedicated to your pursuit of play, like really as, as an art form. And also you do, you know, whether you, you, film, like you're actually, you're doing the work. You're not just because you don't have what you think is a finished piece or something you're actually putting out there. You do the work. Mm -hmm. You're actually shooting constantly. And, uh, and right. then also you work with, you know, this show that you had last summer was in, at Autobody I, in Belport. Oh yeah. That was that amazing. Was really and that was, Thanks. 
Um, for anyone who was able to see it, that was such an amazing show of you and your family. 